right, so let's look at some examples of how we can use what we learned in 7.3 using reference angles to solve equations. All right, so first off, let's start with a hard one. Let's say that we're asked to solve for all, for all values of theta where this is true. All right, this is also a good review of how to do inverses when you have the reciprocal functions like cosecant, secant, cotangent. Okay, so I know that cosecant is the same as 1 over sine theta, which equals negative 5. All right, then I can flip this, flip both of them around. I get that sine theta equals 1 over negative 5. All right, now I'm going to stop for a second before I put this in my calculator. I'm just going to make this little note here, which is that sine of theta equals negative one-fifth in quadrant three and in quadrant four. Okay, this is going to help me out when I'm um, doing my um, reference angles. Okay, so now I'm going to take sine inverse of negative one-fifth. All right, that's going to give me my theta. When I plug that into my calculator, it's going to give me negative 11.54 degrees. Okay, now negative 54 degrees is in quadrant four. Okay, so since it's in quadrant four, that means that I need to find the other answer that's in, find it, that's in quadrant three. So find other answer in quadrant three. To find that, I need to find the reference angle of this. And the reference angle is going to be 11.54 degrees. Remember, because the absolute value of this angle is less than 90, then I can just take the absolute value of this to get my reference angle. Okay, if that's confusing, go ahead and draw a picture of this and verify for yourself. Okay, now that I have the reference angle, I can use the following formula, which is that if I'm in quadrant three, I know that my reference angle equals theta minus 180 which would be 11.54 equals theta minus 180. What's up for you guys? So that means that theta is going to equal 191.54 degrees. Okay, and that means that my other theta equals negative 11.54. Okay, now I'm going to stop here for just a second. Now I asked you to find all values, okay? So I'm asking you to find all theta. Okay, so I'm not restricting theta to just between 0 and 360. Okay, so what that means is that means that I'm going to tag on 360 degrees n to both of these answers. Okay, now why would I do that? Well, let's go ahead and look at one of our old examples. So notice that here, I get that cosine equals negative two thirds when I hit um, 131, 131.81 degrees. Now let's say that I went around the circle once and then 131.81 degrees more. So let's say that I went around the circle one time, that's 360, and then I went around again 131 degrees more. See how I would still stop at an angle that would terminate there? And I could also do that again, so I could go around twice. So I could go around two times and still terminate there. So what this means, this 360n, 
that means I could do this. I could just stop at 191.54, or I could go around the circle as many times as I want, one, two, three, four, a million, plus 191.54 degrees more, and I would still stop when cosecant equals negative five. Okay, so make sure to tag this on to your answers if it says find all theta and it doesn't give you restrictions between zero and 360. Okay. Also, if, you're in, if your answer is in radians, okay, then you would tag on two pi n since two pi is all the way around in radians. All right, so let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, so let's do, let's solve, so find all theta such that, this st means such that, cosine squared theta equals one half. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take cosine squared theta equals one half. I'm gonna take the square root of both sides Okay, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides of this guy. And that's going to give me that cosine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of one half, which equals plus or minus root two over two. Okay, if you're not sure how I went from root one half over to here, just let me know. Okay, so what this plus or minus means is that it means I'm going to have to do two different inverses. So that means I'm going to have to do cosine inverse of positive root 2 over 2, and I'm going to have to do cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. Okay, now remember, on the unit circle, Right, just like here, I'm going to have two spots where cosine equals positive one-fourth. I would also have two spots where cosine equals negative one-fourth. Okay, so in total, I'm going to have four answers. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one. So if I enter this into my calculator, I'm going to get 45 degrees. And I know that this terminates in quadrant one. And I know that cosine equals root two over two also in quadrant four. Okay, so cosine also equals root two over two in quadrant four. So in quadrant four, my rule for theta r is 360 minus theta. So that's gonna be 45 degrees equals 360 degrees minus theta. When I solve for theta, I'm going to get that theta is going to equal 315 degrees. Okay. Over here, I know that cosine equals negative root 2 over 2 in quadrant 2, as well as in quadrant 3. So when I enter this into my calculator, my calculator is going to give me that that equals that at 135 degrees which is in quadrant one. So now I need to solve for the other angle in quadrant three. So in quadrant three, my rule is Q R equals um, theta minus 180. Okay, and these are gonna have the same co-terminal angle, remember, because the absolute value equals the same theta R. Okay, so go ahead and look in video two if you don't remember that. Right, and review that even though these two are different, the absolute values are the same, so they're gonna have the same reference angle. All right, so that means that 45 degrees equals theta minus 180, which gives me that theta equals 225 degrees. then I would write that theta equals 45 degrees, theta equals 135 degrees, 
theta equals 225 degrees, and theta also equals 315 degrees. Now remember at the beginning of it, I asked you to find all. Find all theta. So that means that you're also going to tag on a 360 degree end to this. So each and every one of these. Alright, so let's go ahead and try out one of these 360 ends and see if it works. So if I open up my calculator and I type in cosine, and let's do 45 degrees plus 360, then I'm going to get root 2 over 2. Okay, now let's try if I do 360, and this n means multiple of 360, so let's do 360 times 2. It's also going to give me root 2 over 2. So let's try a negative 2. Let's see what that does. Okay, That's also going to give me a root 2 over 2. So this means any negative or positive multiple of 360. All right, now let's try that for 135. Okay, and that gives me negative root 2 over 2, which is also perfect. That's great. That's what I wanted. Okay, so let's do two more examples. Okay, these ones are a little bit easier. I always start it with the harder ones. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so let's find all theta such that 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and solve for sine first. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. All right. And if you'd like to, you can pause the video and uh, try doing this on your own first. Okay, so we're going to add two, or add 1 to both sides. We're going to get 2 sine theta equals 1. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2. That's going to give us sine theta equals one half. All right, then we're going to take the sine inverse of both sides. That's going to give us that sine inverse of one half equals theta. And if we plug that into our calculator, that's going to give us 30 degrees. And remember that sine of theta is going to equal one half in quadrant one and also in quadrant two. Okay, since 30 degrees is in quadrant 1, we're going to have to find the other angle in quadrant 2. Right? And then the rule for this one is that theta r equals 180 minus theta. Remember, since this is in quadrant 1, it's its own reference angle. It means that 30 degrees is 180 degrees minus theta. And that gives us that theta equals 100 and 50 degrees. Okay. Now remember before I listed my answers in the line, this is another way you can write it. You can write it 150 degrees comma 30 degrees plus 360 degrees in. That's also another fine way to do it. Okay. Now if I wanted to write these answers in radian, then I would have had written pi over 6, comma 5 pi over 6, plus 2 pi n. Remember again, because 2 pi is all the way around the circle when you're dealing in radians. All right, let's do one last example. Okay. All right, let's find all theta such that cosine squared theta plus cosine theta equals 2. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out this one on your own. All right, so let's write this down again here. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And that's going to give me cosine squared theta plus cosine theta minus 2 equals 0. If this looks intimidating to solve, go ahead and try solving x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0 first. Okay, so if you try solving this one first, what you're going to do is you're going to factor this out. That's going to give you x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, now we know that for this to equal 0, either this bit has to equal 0 or this bit has to equal 0. Okay, so what we do is that we set both of them equal to 0 and we solve them independently. Okay. So for this one, we get that x would have to equal negative 2. For this one, we get that x would have to equal 1. And that would be our answer. All right, we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to factor that cosine. So we get cosine of theta plus 2 times cosine of theta minus 1 equals 0. OK, now like, just like we had over here, either this bit has to equal 0 or this bit has to equal 0. So we're going to set them equal to 0 independently and solve them. So I'm going to start with cosine plus 2. I'm going to set that equal to 0. So that means that cosine theta equals negative 2. Now remember that cosine can only go between negative 1 and 1. So negative 2 is too small. So that means I'm not going to have an answer for that one. Okay, so let's move on to this side. So let's do cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. So that means that cosine theta equals 1. And I know that that only occurs if I look at the unit circle at theta equals 0 degrees or 0 radians. So that would be my only answer. Okay, sometimes you're going to run into more complex ones. Um, perhaps we could have factored this out so that was minus one half, and then you would have ended up with two answers. Or maybe you factored this out and it got really complex, and you might have ended up with four or more answers. Okay, but always be on the lookout for something greater than one or less than negative one. All right, and that concludes our uh, exercises for section 7.3.